Ooh, Barcelona. Spanish thing, Spain. That's the only part of the song I know. Barcelona. Ooh, Spain. Hello and welcome to another episode of Strong Free Cocktails. That's a bad song, not gonna sing it again. Anyway, welcome to Stroke Free Cocktails and Stroke Free Kitchen collab with myself episode. Today I'm going to be making pan con tomate and a gin and tonic. This, I'm gonna just set this down. Oh, it's so hot. This episode is inspired by my trip to Spain this year, and I was like ready for the Spain experience. I was there, I was ready to get the culinary adventure that I wanted. And girl, did I get that culinary adventure. I decided to make kind of just these basic staples of Spanish cuisine, and that is pan con tomate and a gin and tonic. And I know gin and tonic sounds very simple, Ramona Singer, but I'm gonna put a little twist, well, the Spanish twist on a gin and tonic. So, let's get cooking. Lemon, strawberry, rose water. Gin and it's pink. Tonic. Duh. So I already have my toasted sourdough bread and then I grated two tomatoes as fresh as you can find. You'll grate them like with a box grater and you want sort of the consistency that's like a little bit pulpy. Um, but enough uh, like weight and texture so that it'll fill up that yummy toasty bread. And then I'm gonna add some really nice high quality olive oil, just enough so you get like, you still have that tomato consistency, but it's not completely saturated in olive oil. And then it's basically like, one clove of garlic. I like to grate my garlic. You can chop it, you know, like old school style, but grating your garlic just with a cute little microplane is so much easier. So that's the life I like to live. And I've already put some salt in here. I like a salty tomato. I'm gonna spoon on my little toast. See how easy this is? It's like, oh my God, who am I, a housewife? So I'm gonna spoon a little bit of this. I also think this is best room temperature, like if you make this ahead, let the tomato come to room temperature because then you get that juiciness. It just tastes better. And then I'm gonna spread this evenly. Yeah, that's good, that's perfect. While this like marinates for a second, I'm gonna make a cute little gin and tonic. So there are a couple of things that make a Spanish gin and tonic different from your regular old gin and tonic with like a little squeeze of lime, like cute whatever at a dive bar. So I'm gonna do two ounces. I'm gonna use this adorable pink gin. All of the gin and tonics in Spain are like so fun. Experiment with color, bitters, adding just little elements that make it more of a complete cocktail rather than just like a little gun with gin and tonic. So I've got this in here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of rose water. This gin and tonic is actually inspired by the gin and tonic that I had at this really amazing bar in Barcelona called Bobby Gin. It basically had all of these same elements. I'm doing like a lot of dashes of this rose water to like get in there. That was like 10 dashes, I guess. Who counts, you know? Another thing about Spanish gin and tonics is they use a lot of ice and they use a really large wine glass, like these goblety, some tell me Olivia Pope-like wine glasses. And look at this, the ice is, this looks like a dick. Um, so we're gonna use a lot of ice. The bigger, the better, the icier, the iciest, and then Use a good quality tonic. This tonic is actually super light and not super quinine-y. Like, I think that's the thing people get afraid of with gin and tonics, but your gin and tonic needs to be refreshing rather than just like that, ugh, the like overly sugary taste. Okay, 
So then we're gonna do some cute garnish action. So I'm going to do a lemon peel. One of the ingredients in this particular gin is lemon peel. So I'm echoing that flavor in this. I also think that part of the reason of using these globes is so you can get the aroma instead of having it in a tall, skinny glass. And then I'm gonna do a little strawberry, you know, get that pink in there, the rose water. I'm basically cutting it into these little slits like you're at like a buffet or whatever and they've got the cute strawberry garnish on the plate. Look at that, look at it, fanning out like a cute thing and don't get it all over stuff. And look at that! Now I've got my cute little garnish. Sometimes people go really crazy with the garnishes for the gin and tonic. I don't got time for that, but I have time to fan out a strawberry. So, mm, y'all, I smell the lemon, I smell the strawberry, I taste the gin, I taste the tonic. It tastes like a little rosy. And then I have my pan con tomate. Deep breath. Mmm, mmm, Jesus Christ, San Sebastian, is that a Spanish thing, San Sebastian, I don't know, this is delicious, I basically am transported, you know, when I was in Spain, when I was in Spain, I took a lot of siestas, Henry, <laughs> he's asking for me, you know, people just honk when they need me, so when I was in Spain, you know, had some indigestion. <laughs> had to take a lot of naps. I literally siestaed every single day in Spain and I was like, I am so obsessed with tomatoes. Tomatoes you got. This, if anything could encompass my Spain experience, it would be these gin and tonics which are dangerous and get you so freaking drunk. And then it would be these pan con tomates. Okay, so some places with the pan con tomate would like puree it, but when you have it crushed like this, you can taste the nuances of the tomato and the garlic and the salt. And it's just so good. I'm gonna go relax, just like the Spanish people do. Enjoy, I keep wanting to say the Colosseum, but that's in Rome. Enjoy the statues, the plaza, the gelato, the children. Have a straw-free day. Go make yourself a pan con tomate, a little gin and tonic, and adios, amiga.